Savannah again, and this year for my Renaissance Fair costume, I'm going to be making armor out of shells. Now, this is the first drawing that I made, so it probably won't look like this when it's done, but essentially what I'm making is a shell armor, this part right here, or scale armor. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera. The main body of it, and then I will make some shoulder pieces and hip pieces, hopefully, if I get enough. I might have to go get more shell. But that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I make each of the little scales. Here's one of them. No hole in it yet, but I'm going to show you how I make each one of those. And then I'm going to show you my bodysuit part that I'm making. And then the shoulder pieces and hopefully a neck piece maybe. And hip pieces. But we'll just see how it goes. Alright, in order to get started, the first thing I have to do is get protected. Because when you go to grind these little scale pieces... The clamshell will sometimes break, and also I broke a lot of these little discs. So definitely have to have eye and respiration protection. The dust actually makes my hair feel really bad afterwards. Like I have to always take a shower, and even then it still feels really bad. But it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to start off making just a single scale. And what I do is I have this little template piece that I made, and I'm going to trace that onto the shell that I picked out. And I try to use the curves, like the natural shape of the shell to kind of make these so that I'm not having to cut a lot at one time. I try to just kind of use the same sides if I can. So there, that's roughly one scale. And I only do one at a time because the dust will cover up the um, sharpie and then I won't be able to see it so it's pointless to mark them all at once and then grind them. But I don't really care if they're 100% exactly alike because I just know that it's impossible. But we're going to do the best that we can. I should probably be wearing gloves too but I guess that's my way of living on the edge. But here we go. Now once I've got the scale cut out, I'm going to go over it with the Dremel and cut off all of this extra outside layer so that it's just the shiny mother of pearl showing. Here's the scales I've made today. Usually I can get about 12 to 15 done in an hour, but it's starting to get cold out here, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill them. This is actually the scariest part of this process because I can very easily break them, or I can accidentally lose grip and sling them around until I can manage to turn this Dremel off or they break apart, so. I really prefer to have no one else on the porch when I do this.
There they all are. I'm gonna take them and put them inside my Ziploc bag with all the rest of them. As you can see, I've taken my scales now and I'm starting to sew them onto a leather bodysuit, which consists basically of a front and a back piece that looks similarly like this, both front and back. It's going to fasten in the crotch area to keep everything in place. I've already gotten one row of scales picked out. Basically, since they're all differently shaped, I have to kind of go through each row and decide which pieces lay best where. And then I'll have to take them all off in the same order and then individually sew them on. So that's what I'm going to do. I didn't want to make this video super long by showing the whole process of figuring out where all the scales go. But I'm really liking how it's going so far. It's a lot shinier in here than I thought it was. Like when I'm cutting them out, I can't really see the shine. It must just be the lighting on the porch where I'm doing it. But in here you can actually see it. I'm actually really liking the like variation in colors. Some of them are like this pink color, and then others are white, and then there's like this peach one too. It's pretty cool. But anyways, I'm going to change the angle of the camera so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing when I'm sewing these on. So here's the scale I'm going to be sewing on. What I basically have is some wax saddle making thread, and I've taken a needle, like an embroidery needle, and I've doubled the thread onto it. Maybe you can see it better if I've got it doubled one knot at the end and then what I'm going to do is take this giant needle right here and I basically through this wool rug and there's carpet under here I'm going to I don't know if you can see but I'm going to stab It'd be better if I was left handed like summer stab a hole right there and through the hole of the scale and on top of the scale Then I'm going to take my needle and thread, put it through this one, and here's the back, pull it through, then put it back through the bottom hole, pull it back out, then take our scale here, and it come up through the bottom of the scale. Now I'm going to take my needle and fit it through this little in-between right underneath the knot and pull that tight and then pull this tight. Then I'm going to knot it twice. Once right here under this knot. Pull it tight. So we have that, then I'm going to flip it up, bring it through right here, pull it tight again, and then make another knot. So essentially each time I sew on a scale I have to do three knots the one at the end of the thread, then the two to secure it. And now I'm just going to cut it. If I can find my scissors. There they are. Like so. There. That's one. I'll go ahead and do a couple more. So here it is with the whole layer, the new layer on. Maybe I'll move it around for you so you can see. It's quite articulate. It does um, lay a little bit better when it's actually hanging because the gravity helps everything stay in place when I lift it up like this. Sometimes the scales get caught on each other. But overall, I really like it. I like the way it moves. I like the way it looks. So I have a long way to go. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm getting into a point in this project where I really need to know which shells I can use to make scales and which ones I just can't. And I found that shells like these bigger flat ones are a whole lot easier to make scales than say these kind. And that's because these kinds they only really have like one thin point and it's like right here. So it makes the scales kind of curved. Maybe if I show it to the light, I don't think I'll show it, but I can only really get one scale right here and the rest of it's really dense. But what I'm thinking is maybe making shoulder pieces with these ones and actually them being individual scales themselves. I don't know if it will work, but this is essentially what I have in mind. I'm going to take these. Let's pretend that this is a shoulder for a second. Attach them to a piece of leather like the bodysuit. Like this. So they're kind of scales themselves. And they're going to go all the way up from the arm to the shoulder. If I can get them to stay without falling. And then maybe have like one big one to go in front, kind of like a pauldron or a spalder, probably more like a spalder, I think spalders are just a little bit smaller. So that's the idea, I've been playing around with some paper patterns, and I'll show you that in a little bit. I want it to be really simple and functional, and I want to be able to finally figure out what to do with like all these bigger ones like this one I've decided it would be good for like a neck piece so I've got a few of them designated but I really need to be able to start getting more and more scales made at a quicker pace I think I'm down to like three weeks before it's time for us to go to rent fair so let me show you my pattern ideas okay so here are the pattern pieces that I've been playing with it's the front and the back they're the same and basically this is the part that's going to go on the shoulder and this will go onto the arm and probably have a cord from here to here that goes around my bicep to keep it in place. This part right here will have a strap attached to it so that can go all the way across both front and back and attach somehow under the armpits. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet, whether it be a slide buckle, a regular buckle, or maybe even just cords like the rest of it. I want this part to have the shells on it, obviously, but then I want this part, like the straps, to sit underneath the bodysuit so that it, there's not straps crisscrossing my chest. But I guess what I need to do is also put the bodysuit on here and see how those will fit. Obviously, this dress form doesn't have arms and shoulders, so I can't really 100% test it, but I'm thinking this will work. If not, it's not a lot of resources wasted, but I'm going to get the bodysuit now. All right, so here's the bodysuit on the mannequin. This is actually the first time I've seen it on someone besides myself. And the mannequin's not to my measurement, so it's a little bit baggy in places, but immediately I definitely need to do something about this neckline. Probably put like several small darts in it so that it closes it up more, but still leaves room for the bust area. And then I'm almost wondering if I should shave a little bit of this, make it more like a razor back or maybe even increase the start to make it lay a little bit flatter. I do have to redo these darts anyways because I didn't tie them off well enough and the weight of trying this on has already put stress on this string so I may do that. And then the shoulders, obviously I think I'd prefer this to be a little bit under the straps, the top straps of the bodysuit. And then also I want to have the bigger shell be somewhere right here, but what I may have to do is also put a, another shell, like a bigger shell, up on top of the shoulder, maybe like do a shell and then the neck pieces as a separate piece to go over, just to kind of make everything look seamless, because I don't want to see like, I don't want to see all these little holes around the neckline or around the edges. I don't know, it's going to be experimentation the entire thing. And then obviously like down here in the armpit, maybe I should go to this side, there's a little bit more light. I imagine that these straps will come probably somewhere right in there, either right up against the actual armpit or a little bit lower. We'll see. Yeah, I think I'm going to either dart these more. Could shave them a little bit just to give more range of motion. 
but yeah, I'm pretty excited. So here are my leather pieces that I cut out with the paper pattern. I've put holes right here to put some cording through to go around my bicep. Then I also put two holes up here and I've just got the cording from the shoulder area through there to help keep it in place. I don't know if that's how I'll wear it when it's actually on because it can actually kind of move independently without them, but I just thought I'd give myself the option. I just have the straps tied right now. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with those, but I'm going to work on getting the shells attached to it, hopefully. I know that this seems short, but I'm actually gonna start the shells right about here so that they'll hang down and there won't be any of this showing. That's my goal is to not have the leather showing at all. Let's do the back view. There we have it. I'm gonna get back to work. So here is the front panel all the way completed. I've used about 450 some scales so far. I'm not 100% sure if I'm done with the very top of it, but I'll that'll be a judgment call whenever I get to making both of those shoulder pieces. And then maybe the neck piece too, just seeing if it's covered up all the way or not. I have about a little bit over 70 hours invested in this costume right now. That includes making an undershirt as well and all the patterns and stuff. I'm liking the way it's turning out, but now it's really time to race and finish the rest of it. So now I'm going to go through and start taking the black outer layer off of all this type of shells. Now each of these shells, I need to drill a hole through here because that's actually the thinnest part at the right spot on the shell. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. So here's how the first arm piece is coming along. Most of it's sewed on. This piece right here isn't, and this one, little one right here isn't. There's a few small gaps, so I think I'm going to put some smaller shells underneath, but other than that, it looks pretty good. I'm going to show you how I did it on the next one.
back piece, what I've got done so far. I'm going to take these other kinds of shells and make a spine piece all the way up the back and then it's eventually going to widen off into the shoulders that way. I use less of the actual scales and it will blend into the arm pieces that I've got being made. Luckily the back piece is actually a little bit less wide than the front piece so it's not taking me quite as long to do that. And since I'm using the seashells it takes a lot less time to make the scales because I don't have to basically like polish all these are the fresh water ones. I don't have to polish off that black outer covering. So it doesn't take quite as long. I can make about, I think I'm averaging around 15 to 16 now per hour instead of like the dozen, 10, 11. So yeah, still a long ways to go, but at least I've got something on here. Gotta get back to work. Folks, here is the back piece, mostly done. I still have a few more places I need to put some shells to help hide the leather, but whew, it's been a long process. I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to finish it with all freshwater shells like the front, but that can be something left for next year. The only thing I have left to do now is to make these neck pieces, they're not actually all together yet, and fix the shoulder pieces you can see they're just shells kind of like butterfly together with stitching it's gonna fit right over that but I still have all that to figure out but then tomorrow is basically dress rehearsal day and then Saturday is going to be the big run fair day so getting excited but I'm also really tired I have no idea how many shells or scales I made for this back piece yet I haven't calculated it but I'll definitely put the total at the end of this video. Anyways, I'll show you the front. I don't trust this mannequin to stay standing while I turn Here's it around. Here's the front piece. So you can see it with both the arms and the little shoulders and the neck piece kind of in place. Basically, I still have to cut that straight and attach them together. I may put like another little shell right here, like maybe have a strip of leather that goes all the way down and attaches down here where the shoulder attaches and then have a shell covering up. I'm going to have a shell covering up these front parts too. I might actually make this where it connects and disconnects, like take that off and maybe have a piece of leather that has a clasp or something. We'll see, I gotta figure it out still, but it's getting closer.
shoulder piece is finished. What I've got going on here is this shell flips up a little bit. And this part actually is just laced up and I can pull it and tie it tight so that I can get my head through here. And then these ones are attached to a leather strip all the way down. Two little holes to tie it right there where the shoulder ties. And then up here, this is just hiding this little joint. And then back here is the same thing. And then my back piece rests under this. There we go. It's probably the last check-in I'll do before rent there. I'm gonna try everything on now, make sure that everything's covered.